It's time again. Let's get back into this time under tension. So today we're gonna, uh, we got a lot of feedback on, on our bands, our band lengths, a lot of questions about the lengths and the levels. I'm gonna walk you through that a little bit later on in this one here. But we're gonna start with, I wanted to start showing you guys how to adapt it to equipment. Okay, we can show you how to wrap a band around something and get to it, but a lot of you guys are in the gym. So, so I wanted to show you how to take our bands and how to put them on certain pieces of equipment in your gym, whether it be the club or your home gym. <coughs> so we're here at Performance Culture today. Uh, one of my favorite places to train. I just, I love the culture here. I love the environment. Um, I get to be me. I get to do my, my methods here. We're in uh, a Recon Smith machine. This is one of our older racks. Um, it's been here for a while. It's been used and abused, but held up like a champ. So we're gonna use this one to kind of demonstrate some adaptive training. I've already set up our bench. We're gonna do chest first of all. So I've laid down a flat bench inside the Smith. Um, and now I'm gonna show you kind of how, how to get that band around the frame and back up to your bar. So with this rack specifically, I can come right under the framework of it. I have a level two recon band, 41 inch. So I've doubled it up underneath the frame. I'm gonna loop it through and I'm gonna come right up to the bar. And that's it. <clears throat> Double that up, both sides. Same band length, same band tension. And that's it. Again, no plates, I haven't lifted nothing. Uh, I haven't moved the plates, I'm, I'm not tired. <laughs> I just put a band on a bar and we're ready to get after it. <clears throat> Again, we gotta make sure that we understand that there's tension, there's, there's ways to, to do time under tension everywhere in the gym. But this is progressive tension. Again, remember, we go from here to here progressively. Not the same weight throughout. We start here, progress to this weight. So you're gonna, you're gonna experience that right away once we get into this Smith. The important part, everybody questions, they're like, well, the cable machine's tension. A cable machine's tension, but it's tension 40 pounds here and 40 pounds here, right? The idea of a healthier press is four pounds here, 40 pounds there. Okay, so we're just gonna get up and do some warm up on some bench. No static weight, simply on a bearing base Smith machine, level two recon band, 42 inch, wrapped under the frame and back up to the bar. <clears throat> it's not gonna be a lot of weight um, out of the gate. Again, we, we, we teach on, on levels of progression from our bands but to make everybody understand that right out of the gate, it's a little difficult. So I will give you a weight rating so you kind of understand how much I'm pushing. When I'm at my peak contraction here, I'm probably at about maybe a 35 pound plate aside if, if you kind of had to do that, that math and understand how much I'm actually pressing. But I'm pushing through that 35. I'm not down here with 35 or 35 aside pushing through. I'm down here with tension at about six, seven pounds pushing through to that same top number, right? Progressive time under tension. Simply on rack, when I press, my knuckles are up and I get full range because this band is pushing it down on me, right? <clears throat> Easy, I can get after about 15 to 20 reps with just that band on it Again, at the peak, I'm probably 70, maybe 105 pounds, 110 pounds, which isn't much. But as I push through it is where the work happens, right? <clears throat> so we're gonna add a little bit of static because we don't expect everybody to switch right over to bands. So we're gonna put some static on there so that you guys know it's dead weight as well as some tension uh, at the same time. Like, I'm putting a 10 pound on, on each side, but adding that 10, um, with the tension, that 10 feels like 30. It's just when you get to that peak, right? <clears throat> so this probably added about 30 pounds, 40 more pounds, if I had to tell you in pounds or in how much weight. Don't get me wrong, that's not easy. Even though it's just a band and a 10 pound plate, like I'm, that, that, that worked me. 
my pecs are definitely engaged and they're, they're, they're engorged. <clears throat> so, but I can keep going. I can do 15 reps with another 10 pounds a side. So let's add some static. Again, another 10 per side. That 10 is going to feel like 30. So I'm using a Smith today to show you guys this on because the Smith is on bearing rails and guide rails, right? Um, to begin band training, it engages the core right away. So your whole body has to be, you know, engaged in almost every muscle firing to, to balance that, that tension that's pushing back on you. So I'm using the Smith just to show you guys that this will help you stabilize in the beginning. But as we progress, I'm gonna show you in a real rack how to do it without the Smith adaptation, like the guide rails, right? <coughs> On just a normal bar in a rack. Which then it's, it's, it's 10 times difficult because, and you can see as I come down, I'm not fighting with the full amount of weight on this bar. Because when I'm in this position, that progressive tension has lessened as I've come down. But as I push through, that tension increases, right? And at my peak contraction, I'm full out. I, not easy, not hard. Like, oh my God, that was heavy, but Man, that felt good. That was a good press, right? Like, I'm full. Um, <coughs> again, progressive all the way to the top. So as I come down, I don't have to push through that same weight all the way through. You think about it, it just makes sense, right? I can go heavier. <coughs> I can add another band if I wanted to, or I can add more static. So kind of the secret here is to find that happy place with static and tension on the body, right? Just static, it's very difficult. Just tension can only get so far, right? So you wanna be that happy place. So I'm gonna grab a couple different bands. We're gonna add another level of band to this to just add that little bit more tension. And I'm gonna back off the static weight a bit. So I'm gonna take 10 off. Okay, so coming back to the whole, you know, recon band levels and band lengths. We already talked about that being a level 240 inch that I doubled up underneath the frame. Now I've grabbed a level 230 inch, so that 12 inches shorter, 10 inches shorter, same level, but what I've noticed is, yo, I wanna wrap it around that frame. So I already know that I need a shorter band to do that, right? <coughs> With this machine specific. And understand that every piece of equipment is gonna be different, but there's always gonna be a frame there and there's always gonna be a way to adapt a band. Period. So there's no excuse not to add tension. <clears throat> I can see right here is a good anchor point. When I say that good anchor point, what that means is where's the other end of your band attached to, right? We see a lot of stuff on socials or on, you know, social media and, and that kind of information about band training. And sometimes, most of the times, no one shows you where the other end of the band is attached to. And, 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 you know, I know why they don't show it, but to let you guys in on a little something, why they don't show it is because that is the most difficult part of band training. And that's why it's not more predominant than it should be, is because where do you put the other end of that band? Like, we can utilize these bands and do tons of workouts and tons of stretches, but if you don't have that anchor point to put the other end of the band on, you're useless, it's useless, it's pointless. So right now we're using this frame on this machine as an anchor point, but you know, we've kind of already leaked to you guys that we have some crazy products coming out in the next month. And a recon anchor point is, 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 is our biggest patent to date. And, and that's the one that's about to get exposed come March, April. That's the anchor. That's the other part of the band that no one shows you how to attach to. And we've made that simple. But for today, we're gonna stick it around this frame here. So I've doubled up Again, a recon level two band, 30 inch, right? Because we have those lengths that you guys have never seen before in a market. <clears throat> and I'm gonna come back up to the bar. 
Now I've got doubled up bands times two here. I could take those out and I could move myself up to a level three recon band and do a single wrap. But for this demonstration, I'm showing you, you can go band on top of band on top of band if you want until you understand, hey, I'm at a level three now. I just need one band, right? <clears throat> Same thing, you know, I've looked at this machine. I understand the anchor points. I understand where I can tie it to to get it back up to the bar. You know, and to get the benefits of this training, we don't expect you guys to sit in a gym and assess a piece of equipment and understand its framework and where's the best pivot point, where's the best anchor point, which is why we're doing what we've done, which is why we've done the reconnaissance into band training so that we can show and we can tell you guys, hey, this piece of equipment, go to the frame. It's easy, right? <coughs> so I've added more tension and taken off a little bit of static, right? <coughs> For a number, because that's how everybody works, you know, until we get everybody switched over to a level of band, everybody needs to understand how much weight is that? How many pounds are you pushing, Jay? So with that extra band that I just added, I probably added about a plate aside, probably almost a 45 aside. Because it's a shorter band and it's doubled up, it's just that extra more tension. Ooh. Right away, as soon as I unrack that, my whole body, my whole core is engaged to handle this tension. And remember, look at the bar. I've only got a 10 pound plate per side, right? That was not easy. <laughs> and I'm not a weak guy. That to me, if I, was, if I didn't understand band training and someone would ask me, yo, how much weight was that you were just pressing? That's gonna be two plates a side, for sure, with a 35 pound bar. <clears throat> the cool thing is I've moved no plates around. I haven't gone back and forth to a plate uh, rack. And I'm not starting with two plates aside, but I'm contracting at that two plates aside, right? So I'm getting more benefits with easier work, if that makes sense. <laughs> it's a workout, like I'm, I'm breathing, I'm not, I was not easy. And all I did, remember, I took weight off and added tension to that. And that's what it just did to my body and to my cardiovascular. Time under tension and, and band training, it's working the whole body the whole time. My whole body has to be a, a, you know, tense and ready for it. I'm burning calories like left and right throughout my workout. I'm not starting with cardio or ending with cardio. I'm, I, I just did cardio through my set. That's what a lot of people don't get. <laughs> I have great cardio, but I'm breathing heavy. That, that was a workout. So I can, depending on my, my training regimen, I can go up a plate or a 10 pound, or I can go up in tension. But the way that we teach and the way that I train is, I don't care about the number of weight. We don't. Um, I don't care about your one RM. I, I don't. I care about you getting minimum of 12 to 15 reps under the proper amount of tension and static weight for your strength, okay? If you can do 12 to 15 and you're getting a tear on every rep, man, you're winning. That's, that's, that's band training. That's time under tension. That's progressive tension training. Stick with that because that's a healthy tear in the muscle and a healthy regrowth, right? So I'm just going to drop set this. I'm going to take that last level of tension off. Ah. Uh. Uh. You know, I'm not, like I said in the beginning, I'm not here to teach you form or there's lots of guys out there that do that and, and, and they do it well. Um, but I will kind of tell you a few things that I focus on through my reps. I do not engage any other body part than the one I'm working. 
um, because it just doesn't make sense. I'm not working traps, so why should I be like this through a chest press, right? So most of my focus is on complete relaxation of my body with exception of whatever part I'm, I'm working. This, for example, engages wrist, engages forearm. Um, I completely take that out of the equation by locking my cage and just pushing chest, right? Like you don't need this, this does, this does nothing. The work is here. <clears throat> so that's something that I always focus on, which really, really allows me to isolate, right? Because nothing else is being engaged. Every rep I do, every move, every body part, first thing I think is relax. Just relax, take the tension out and just do that body part. So I'm gonna drop this again and we're gonna move the bench into an incline position. What I'm showing you here is we're gonna be in this rack for a full chest workout. I'm not going here, I'm not going there, I'm not grabbing dumbbells, I'm in this rack and that's it. That's all I need to do. I'm not going back and forth from the plate tree, grabbing plates, I'm, I'm right here with my bands and that's it. <clears throat> Take static off. Now, if I was in a true workout right now, I'd have dropped that set again and done another 15 to 20 reps at just that tension. Take the tension off. How much easier was that than grabbing plates? Okay, so we've reset up. We've put ourselves in an incline position. Again, no plates. I haven't gone back and forth to the plate tree. I'm still on a level two 42 or 40 inch recon band that I've doubled up up to the horn of the bar, both sides. But now we're in an incline position. Same strategy, you know, 12 to 15 reps. Making sure that you feel that tension, right? Like, number one, when you're training time under tension or with bands, there should never be slack in that band, ever. Like, on your negative or on your positive, never slack. There should always be, you know, if I had to use a number, five pounds of tension on you at all times, right? That's the definition of time under tension. The muscle is under tension the whole time. The slack does not come off of it. Um, <clears throat> and to make that real simple and easy, that's why we have our band lengths, right? Because you see in the gym right now, the 42 inch long green bands or the long orange bands, um, and guys are wrapping it around racks or tying it around things two, three times, and you see them 15 feet away from the anchor point because they don't have an option that band is 40 inches and, and, and that's, that's what you have to do. So again, the, the lengths in the bands play a big part in this. I don't have to be 15 feet away. You know, I use the right size band, the right tension on it, and I can do this. I can do it from anywhere. <coughs> so 40 inch level two recon band doubled up to the bar from an incline position. I should give set. Again, I like knuckles up. As soon as I unrack, you'll watch my whole core, my whole trunk is gonna engage, it has to, because that tension immediately comes on me, right? And as soon as I unrack, like there's no static weight on it, but I'm, I'm under tension, like I, I have to work for this right now. It's a workout, like period. I, I'm, 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 <laughs> there's no showboat here. I'm, I'm struggling, it's a workout. <laughs> I'll add that 10 pounds per side again, static. And you notice when I'm down, it's not a struggle, a struggle and a grunt to push off, right? Because I'm at my lowest, my lightest here. Again, progressive time under tension, progressive band training. It's progressively getting harder. Allows me to work easier and hit that same peak, right? I'm not dying out of the hole. So that's an easy hack, an easy way to start adapting your bands um, to a simple Smith machine, which works on a rack as well. Um, just understanding the framework of that rack and that piece of equipment. Later on in the next couple videos, we'll do kind of the same setup, but in an actual rack, like I said, because it's a little bit different. But once I show you, it just clicks. You only need to see it once. 
and then everything starts to click in the brain. <clears throat> so I'll do one more here while I'm set up in this because the idea, the idea today was to show you how much we can get through without moving. Like I haven't moved, right? I'm in the same position, same rack. I'm gonna go into a military shoulder press. Um, I'm gonna have to change the band size because obviously a shoulder press is a lot more difficult than a flat bench or an incline bench. So I'm gonna dial down the level of band that I'm using to a level one. May sound easy, may sound weird because I'm only on a level one, but because of the length and way the frame is set, that's the level that works for me. And, and again, like I said, that's the big part is understanding how much tension you need, right? So I'm gonna unrack this, set it up for a shoulder press, show you guys kind of, it's almost the same thing, but I still wanna walk you through it, right? <clears throat> All right, same rack, same bar, same bench, same J, same system of training, time under tension. Um, I've moved no plates still. Normally I just stick to chest routines, um, but because we're here and we're set up, I'm just gonna quickly show you a, a, a shoulder press setup. Um, I do love this. I love this for guys beginning under tension. Again, because of the Smith, the bearing system, it forces that, it forces your form um, along with the tension pushing down. You, you, it, it's like the best coach and best spotter all in one, right? Tension and a bearing system for form. <laughs> because it's shoulders, it's a lot heavier work. There's a lot more um, room for impingement, for injury when you do this type of movement, this, this military shoulder press. That's why a lot of guys won't do it. Um, but if we put a, a simple band on it and we add just that little bit of tension, you know, when we peak, that contraction and that pull is, 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 is crazy. It's better than any static weight push you'll get. And again, I'm here talking about it. You try it, you, you gotta do it. And then once you feel that, you're gonna be like, oh shit, like, yeah, you're right. <clears throat> so I'm set up again, same rack. I'm using this rack because we've already explained it to you. I'm gonna come under the frame again, just like we did for the bench setup. But this time I'm using a level one recon band, 40 inch. Level one is our smallest band, it's our starter band, right? Um, but a 40 inch doubled up, I know my body and my strength. For me, this band doubled up like this is just the right amount of tension for, for, for my strength and for what my goals are right now. I will move up in tension and I will graduate to the next band. I do, but for showing you guys, level one on shoulders is all you need, right? <clears throat> shoulders are a tricky one because when you go too much weight or improper form, bang, shoulder pinch, shoulder, shoulder impingements, shoulder injuries instantly. And why would we take that chance, right? unless your goal is to get injured, I don't know. There we go, that's it. Didn't move plates, didn't do nothing. <clears throat> this is another tricky one because I like to go, I like to shoulder, I, I like to do these military presses behind my head. I, I feel like isolation at the peak. If you were to just do this with no bar and you did this behind your head, you feel the isolation, you know, went <laughs> Just exploding. However, most people don't have the range of motion to go behind the head. Band train and you'll get there. Like keep using the bands and you'll get that range of motion, I promise you. So I'll do both. I'll do behind and I'll do in front. Um, I don't recommend, you know, either or. I recommend you understanding your body and its limits and, and, and then doing the movement that way. We, we don't want injuries at all. Why I'm using such a light band right now, because I do not want to blow my shoulders out. I, I, I don't, it'll ruin my career, it'll ruin you know, my whole body that I've built up. Um, so I'm cautious when I do shoulder workouts. Level one band, that's it. <clears throat> it felt great, warm up, no pinch, no nothing. I'm not like, ow, you know. It just felt really good. Now I'm gonna add that little bit of static onto it. <clears throat> 10 pounds per side. 
And as you start to watch the way that, the way that I train, you'll never see me load a plate or a bar with more than maybe 25 or 35 pounds of static. It just, it doesn't make sense when you add the tension into it. <clears throat> so I prefer, I prefer the tension and then add the static. And then I'll stop the static when I start to feel maybe my form failure or I'm just working too hard and not getting the benefit, right? Feels like 50 at the top, right? Because when I'm down here, I'm in a nice comfortable weight position and I can drive it through. The biggest thing about shoulders and shoulder presses, any kind of shoulder movement is keep the traps relaxed, right? Like I told you, when I get into a set, it's all mind for me, it's all in my head and I'm telling myself, relax my body, use just the muscle I'm going after. And the biggest thing is people raise their traps up to try to pull off the, the shoulders. Keep the traps down, push off the palm, And to be honest, I couldn't even make it through more reps. I'm just, that time, that time under tension is just exhausting. <clears throat> I'm not even gonna go up and wait. I'm just gonna stay there. I'm gonna do one more set at that. I'm gonna drop it down to just the tension, burn my set out there, and then that's it. <clears throat> I don't feel any pain, right? Like most guys will come off of a, a military press and super sore or, or ah, I just got a pinch. That doesn't happen with bands, using bands properly. Actually, I'm gonna move this set to the front for, 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 for the people with less mobility. I mean, we're gonna get you there because the goal of time under tension and band training is yes, strength conditioning, but it's mobility, right? Like I'm 45 years old, I wanna be able to, you know, play football and, and, and coach my daughter's volleyball team and I need that mobility to do that. That's the number one reason why I started band training. And then I started understanding, oh man, the strength I'm starting to develop is crazy. And then I dove deeper into band training and, and here we are. So I'm gonna put this up front because most of the people are gonna press from the front. <clears throat> Again, I'm not gonna tell you guys you know, form or tricks or anything like that, but I'll drop a little something here and there on what pops into my head as I'm about to get into reps. I'm very structured in my training, I'm very structured in my life. So right out of the gate, I need to be centered. I need to be balanced on this bar, otherwise I feel like I'm lopsided, right? I'll, you'll notice I'm always look up. I'm actually driving my nose to the center of the bar. And this is, I'll center myself out every time I get into a machine. If I'm over here, there's obviously a problem, right? So I center myself out so my body's balanced. I'm not pushing one side heavier than the other. <laughs> Coming into my gyms, all my bars, we got our center point marked for that reason. Doesn't mean we can't still go after that full range, right? Like, get it down there, right? Yeah, it's good, it's, it's, it's definitely a burn. Um, I'll unrack the static, I'll do just the tension, and then we're gonna move on to a couple little gym secrets, if you will. Some things that you guys can do at your gym with the equipment they have, and some more bands. All right, back for some more time under tension. This time we're gonna do more of an accessory kind of um, adaptive clinic, if you will. Um, every gym has these handles. If your gym doesn't have this handle, then I, I, I honestly don't know where you're training. <laughs> Every gym has these handles, okay? Every gym has a carabiner, okay? They're on every cable machine. Half the time they're taken off and dropped on the floor, but every gym has carabiners and every gym has a handle accessory or two. <laughs> I carry my own beaners around just because I go from gym to gym, uh, training and helping people do adaptive band training. So 
Uh, you can go to, you know, I go to my, my, I climb as well. So I'll go to the nearest climbing store and get myself the, the proper carabiners that I need. You guys can grab them from the equipment or grab one from Home Depot, grab one from your climbing store or anything like that. I keep these in my gym bag. I keep them everywhere. Like I probably have a dozen in my gym bag. <clears throat> so we're going to show you today just a couple little tricks that, that, that you can use in the gym that probably no one has seen before or done before, but puts you into the basic time under tension training again, using a recon bands, that progressive tension, right? <clears throat> so what I'm about to do is kind of replicating what you would be doing on a cable machine, but we're doing it with bands to get that progressive tension as opposed to a static tension, right? Or, or, or a tension that is the same weight throughout. So because of the way I'm positioned, I have the bar behind me. Um, I've done these a million times, so I'm gonna use this setup. But really, you can attach these to anything behind you. You can do these standing up, which I'll show you as well. Um, but we're doing a bench right now. So I take my carabiner, okay? I'm taking a level two 30 inch recon band. I'm gonna wrap it around the bar behind me. That's it, I've doubled it up. I've taken my carabiner, I've attached my carabiner to that band, I've taken my everyday handle found in everyday gyms, and I've attached it to that, okay? We're fully set up. Now just looking at that, uh, if you're a gym person, just looking at that, I'm sure your brain is just spinning as to all of the different things you could do with just that setup. We're gonna do chest press, but imagine doing a row like that. Right? Imagine doing shoulder flies like that, a row like that. Um, we're gonna chest press, so I can go into an incline or a decline like that, all with that progressive tension. I haven't used any weights. I haven't used the cable machine, right? There's nothing static here, it's that clean progressive. So <clears throat> let's get into one so you kind of see how it works, but I know right now your guys' heads are turning as to, oh man, the things that I could do with just that setup, right? A single arm row. <clears throat> Again, the thing about um, you know, training with bands is the anchor point. We talked about that in previous, previous content about none of this can happen without, a, without your band having, having an anchor point, without your band being attached to something that is locked, something that is anchored down, that is not gonna come you know, untouched or tear, tore out, torn out. Um, we've all seen the blooper videos of the band snapping back or the band snapping up when you're doing an assisted pull up. It's terrible. Sure, it's funny to watch, but it's terrible when it happens to you. It just, it sucks. So the anchor point is the most important part of band training, okay? And again, come March, beginning of April, Recon is gonna release that, that product that we got coming for that anchor system. I try not to give away too much because it's a pretty cool thing that we wanna release and our business model is set up a certain way to kind of introduce you guys and then boom open up the product lineup for you so let's get back to the simplicity of attaching a carabiner to what's already existing in your gym <clears throat> very simple i've reached back i'm not pulling on a cable to get myself forward i've adjusted myself to the anchor point which is the bar behind me right again that's the thing about band training is i put the band on a certain anchor point, right? This anchor point is the bar behind me. Now I can move to that anchor point until my body feels right and adjusted. That's the difference between you know, band training and then having to get into a machine where I can't move. It's forcing me to stay in one position, right? And sometimes that position just doesn't work. Again, if I have to tell you how much weight I'm pushing just until everybody gets the, the understanding of what, how much tension it is, I'd probably say on a cable machine, because that's the closest thing you'll get to this movement, I'm probably pushing about 50 pounds a side. Um, so, you know, six stacks down on your, on your cable machine is what that would equate to right now. Yeah. So three great movements hitting the pec in three different ways. I haven't moved, right? <laughs> I haven't moved, I haven't lifted a weight, nothing. 